It's about implementation of Project Oberon machine on a low-cost FPGA. The paper has appeared in uh, Xilinx Excel journal, that is basically Xilinx, space, uh, Xilinx made journal uh, that popularized FPGA uh, technology. And there are other papers related to it that I will talk about later. So, what is the first project Auburn? Yeah, project of the burn was realized quite many years ago. I think it started about '92, as the next version of Pascal and Modula family of languages, and expanded into fully fledged operating system that was operating with one megabyte of memory on the standard setting. Uh, it was servicing all the input output devices by itself and uh, by the standards of its era and still as a programming environment it was uh, quite advanced so it had a lot of things that are similar to plan 9 like inline execution within the editor so you could just highlight the module name and function name to execute it and thus create macros or programmable editors it also helped uh, had the uh, tiled the window manager basically multi-pane window manager so it was fully graphical interface for programmers its main advantage was that it was still very small thus it's uh, suitable as a handbook for construction of operating systems and compilers so it has operating system inside a compiler inside that you can examine <laughs> including code generator so and that the most important part for some people is that it goes from the lowest level programming that was available at the moment to the high level software like windowing system so it's about 9000 lines of code i'm not sure if you are aware like this is something that you can probably do in 100 days if you know how to write it. So in terms of minimalistic design, it's awesome system. Yeah, It's not one of these processors that I talked about that are realized in, in FPGA, like in the 200 lines of code, like fourth machines, but a bit higher level. And it's both programming language there and operating system again, so awesome. What about if somebody wanted to make it basis for even more expanded cores? So there are non-native implementations for Windows, Linux, ARM, and surprise, surprise, I also found one in JavaScript. So we have full, <laughs> full of Brilliant Writer in JavaScript. I, I will show it to you so that you can appreciate how this thing works in real time. So I have a demo part, even without FPGA. And I kind of understand that, for me, the natural question would be if we proceed that far into giving a self-contained minimal tutorial on how operating systems work. We would like to say, why don't we make a tutorial how computers work and work from gates up? Yeah. As, as, as soon as it is feasible for a student to construct the machine on their own, it makes sense. So I would not go like from basic physics to to know to, to, to use these transistors and the sample processor because it's a bit tedious <laughs> that may discourage our students but now we have FPGA technology you can upload a soft core so called so the gate description in relatively high level language like Verilog or VHDL and execute your computer as it would be similar to, to how it would be described when you had a high level description of, of a chip yeah so the principles are the same, it's just a little bit slower. Not by much though. Yeah, so you can simulate the whole computer system. You can tutor people about communications, about protocols used at the hardware level. Some, sounds great for the people that are interested in understanding this or making 
some low level stuff or low level protocols yeah but at least mr Vith that wrote this paper for excel journal told that oh our old computer system on which we started the Auburn project got phased out it's not it's out of life yeah we only only have non-native systems so i thought hmm now we have fpga maybe i will have like lasting system on which i port it and it will be native okay that, that may be also motivation <laughs> and the fact is that this uh, lasting system is about 100 under 100 dollars so it's very similar in setup to Papilio. It's about the strength of Papilio Pro, actually a bit weaker. So it's Spartan 3 with one, basically one megabyte of static RAM. And PS2 port, SD card for communication for permanent storage. So that's like minimal, almost Arduino, yeah? <laughs> okay, so uh, I just made the links here. The only part is some of the images in, in this presentation need to be replaced by graphs to, to be put on the GitHub, so I will probably do it tomorrow. And then you can also follow all the links if you want to pursue this subject. But now we can try the demo how the Auburn system feels in real life. So maybe I will just click it. So I will pick the full disk image and I will start it in... Mm, I think we will fit this resolution here. Okay, we just started it very well. It tells it's Oberon version 5. Initially it has these two panes. I forgot how to resize it correctly but what I can tell, that we can, for example, select this code here and use middle button to execute it. Then we should see the amount of free bytes, for example, yeah? Or we can select this one with the right button. And, oh, yeah, show the modules that are loaded where they are in memory or how much bytes that actually they are using. So it's pretty friendly, I would say, as a programmable basis for programmable editor for something. Yeah, it's pretty extendable, almost like Smalltalk, but simpler. Okay, so we can go back to the previous. Yeah, I, I think I need to go back. So you can try the demo, it's interesting, and then we can go on with the presentation. So that's how Oberon system is structured, so the, these are the, the pink are core modules. So the inner system is, I think, under 2000 lines of code. Then there, there are graphic user interface elements and below that I do not show application elements that are respectively larger in the code size. But you can examine this. There is also a book that describes it. Uh, you can uh, check all the changes in the Oberon emulator. And now the question, uh, how you think difficult it would be to make a computer that just supports this system. So the, I was expecting some very, very minimal processor like this fourth machines. And I was surprised, it is in a way minimal, but like minimal, for a minimal system it is quite featureful. So it has, if you will look at it, this is the, 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 the module diagram of the whole system that was implemented to host the Operon. So the first is risk five top uh, references both the processor elements and uh, peripheral interfaces. So we have the typical advantage of FPGA that we can implement all the peripherals we want in FPGA along with the computing elements. And these are just elements of the processor. So this is 
very simple risk machine with I think 16 registers. Some of them are used as stack registers or program counter or reserved for some kind of global pointer to the constants. But you still have, I think, 11 registers that are usable in the program code, which is good enough. It's way better than the x86. It's more like x64, so <coughs> AMD64 architecture. It's 32 bit, because, like, if you have just one meg RAM, it's probably sufficient. And if you read mostly about the processors that are minimal, you see that maybe they have multiplier and divide. Maybe. But this processor, besides the main control core, has multiplier divider for integers. Also, flo full floating point operations, other multiplier and divider. And it still fits within approximately 2,000 lines of code, of very long code. So it's pretty, pretty economic way of describing something. Basic processing unit that can already do all the arithmetic operations that are most essential because building over it some transcendent on functions is not that difficult, really. Uh, and then the peripherals below are basically RS232, so serial interface, that's pretty standard. Mouse and PS2 keyboard also appear pretty standard. SPI for driving the uh, SD card and the file system. So that's the storage instead of disk drives and so on. That's pretty modern, pretty useful. And the video controller. Well, I can say this video controller is limited to one resolution 1000 by 700, but I also played with this, this kind of board. So unfortunately, until Spartan 6, you cannot regulate the frequency of the monitor and you have only four digital clocks so yeah you, you would have at most four four resolutions for practical purposes maybe eight so you have to fix on one so m later versions have tunable digital digital clock manager so you can work around that but the the way the vga or visual signal generation works you need to adopt uh, in VGA standard the uh, clock frequency for pixels to your resolution. So there is no way around it. So that that is pretty pretty practical constraint. Just it's low powered or old FPGA board because CS Cyclone Four, approximately the same price, has regulation of digital <laughs> clock managers. So. I was very encouraged, so you can have full like C compatible or Pascal compatible or Oberon compatible machine because in the terms of the programming model, this is standard C programming model, <coughs> really. Or the flow plus floating point. So you don't need to implement it. It's usually the most the slowest part. And it's small. Okay, so now I did dive into code. So I will show you what I've seen. <coughs> so I downloaded the code for the project Oberon from project www project Oberon code. I unpacked it. So first uh, project uh, Oberon, yeah, maybe here. And we zoom it so that it's more apparent what happens. Yeah. So most of these things are actually s elements of operation <laughs> system like app tools, graph, inner operating system. Uh, OR is uh, the compiler. Net is networking stack. Outer is the outer operating system, including some of the graphical interface. And besides that, there is Risk V or Risk Five V. So there is S3 mm -hmm. Risk install. This is like the self-contained way of installing it to, to, into FPGA. The risk five Verilog, which is actually the code for the processor. And the W32, I'm, I didn't check, but I think it's some uh, way of hosting the simulation. So I just unpacked the Verilog and checked it 
what is so there is um, some kind of programmable memory it's just four kilobytes maybe microcode I'm not sure but here is the meat so how complex is it is to provide the floating point unit and so on okay let's check it with tools I think I have here slot count that usually check the complexity of the code. Oh, I cannot read this, unfortunately. Okay, so maybe just let's compute the number of lines of code. Uh, of lines generally in the module. So you see these modules are pretty small. Yes, exactly. It's actually under thousand if you just look at the meat and let's see a video controller well the, the not so nice thing is that you could have more comments here so it's not a book here but I will talk about it in a minute but this is like standard very long basically it's a trick of two counter implementation of controller that basically takes the bit from the RAM and uh, generates the signal for this particular piece. So it's mono Chrome monitor because of the uh, memory restraint basically. One meg is not really a lot for graphics memory. So for frame buffer. And that's all. So it uses one clock and two counters. That's, that's the, the standard implementation. I think I, I could have already shown it to you in, in Clash, in Haskell. Yeah? And I will probably show it on Wednesday as a demo by basically doing a demo how to make your first FPGA project. It's very simple. Let's look at the things that seem more complicated. So let's see at FP Adder. Hmm. Also doesn't look very complicated. You basically have two inputs, the clock input and so on. Check whether it actually does something and uh, whether it stalls because it uses too much time it's pretty standard and it, it, this doesn't look like too complicated code for for computing it if only it had a comment so about <laughs> comments I was really really unhappy yeah you could structure it a little bit better I guess but uh, okay now risk 5v this is the control unit. So it also <coughs> basically checks the operation code here and depending on it decides what to do. It's also pretty standard, very low code. I would <coughs> say. So, so like if it's 800, maybe I should implement it in Haskell and check out how it will work, yeah? And host over on, on, on Clash and on, on my latest toy, which is Cyclone 4. Why not? I mean, that's, that's, that doesn't look like a complex, complex project. I should be able to do it next month. But without comments, this kind of reversing engineering, you know, it can be actually one first month or first two months just checking out. But okay. Then I, I looked for the hints in the book. Because there is a book in it, on it. No, 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 I just checked. There are just two chapters about risk system, about the processor. And here, if you look carefully, it's actually, as far as I can tell, almost littered code. So there is a lot of description what happens. Maybe sometimes uh, redundant, maybe sometimes not. But it is there, so you, you are not wasting time, you know, like by recovering comments. There are even diagrams. Nice. So we have like 800 lines of code plus nice book and nice diagrams. Quite ex exhaustive explanation of the mnemonics in the assembly. Hmm, how it works with the registers. By the way, it works uh, on 24 five megahertz clock on 25 megahertz frequency so it doesn't really multiply a lot I think you can make it more efficient this regard 
but that's for the people that are interested in like making the FPGAs run a bit faster. There is even explanation how to do floating point arithmetic or some kind of uh, logical uh, operations. I'd say that, that should be good enough you know, if you know very well to, to construct the machine by yourself. And also this fragment of the book is like a chapter and it's 20 pages. Actually there are two chapters. So, I mean, I have at least entertainment for the next month doing a similar thing and hosting over on, on, on Clash. Yeah? So, I, I, for me, this paper has convinced me that I should definitely go into the book, at least this fragment, and go further so that I check how complex is it to make a real processor, even without cache, even without real pipelining, okay? And there's not, not that much cheating because you need to make arithmetic logic unit first anyway. And then stall and pipelining, we can talk about it at some point of time. But yeah, that's not that critical. That's not that difficult if you think about it. Optimizing it is, but maybe just making it pipeline. So, that th these are my 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 final thoughts. So I, I I still prefer tech book because with tech book I always have the comments next to get the code, and here you either have a book or the code. So the book is PDF, very nice, but the code is no comments, so or barely any comments. So I would prefer literate code, but in length and. Uh, explanation, exhaustiveness, I would say it's one of the best introduction to make your own processor ever. So it's way better in many regards than one of the, some of these minimal instruction set processors where people uh, do a lot of optimization, there a lot of trick, but they will never go to floating point unit, yeah? So that's this kind of practical problem is skipped over. and the simplest structure and you then can build a whole operating system over it which is great the only thing i think i miss is re real multi-threading but well nobody's perfect i mean this was just like one megabyte of memory system by the way after loading all the modules of the basic modules with the compiler i think it takes only 100 kilobytes so it's kind of comfortable at this level maybe without memory management unit So you said 9k lines of code, right? Is yeah. Just, just the parallel stuff? No, 9k lines of code is yes, Oberon uh, code. Oh, so just Oberon code, like That runs on the pro so processor. This okay. processor is, as we checked just now, it's actually be below 1000. Oh, so that was the whole thing? Right? Yeah. Okay. I've basically unpacked the archive of very low code that looks less self-contained. <laughs> because it even includes the, the, the memory image. Normally you have to have some kind of starting memory image there. The thing is, I, I double check with the smallest list machine. They think they have like 100k line of code, the whole thing. Yeah, but is it just for the machine hardware part or? No, a, so no, no paradox stuff, so as soon as they have hardware, just the operating system stuff. 100k lines of code. 500. 500. So I can tell you, uh, there are minimal data flow processors in Clash in Haskell that are like 200. There are also between 200 and 2000 lines of code. Very efficient fourth machines like J1 that basically do everything like integer arithmetics, basic logical operation, maybe not floating point and they are CPUs, that, that's enough to model it. So in a way, hardware is maybe somewhat more difficult to design, but these things that you actually want to design in hardware may take less code on the executable, where you spend most of your time is simulation and debugging. So most, most uh, debugging pipelines include this set up simulation rigor, check that your simulation is, is good enough. 
possibly co-simulate or make simulation of your software environment along with hardware, check that it proceeds through the states in an appropriate way. Was that uh, for what else and how simulator checked? Yeah, so there I, I didn't talk about simulator. It's actually, I don't think it's provided. So normally you would have to have pro possibly another that, that amount of code as a simulator, but if you have executable operating system on which you can check that it runs, that also may serve as as a reference test because you know when when it stops and when when it breaks.